Hi there, this is Murph. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how to um, uh, remove the uh, UDEV RIDE network rules uh, on, on a CentOS uh, 6.5 uh, VM uh, that can help you cloning uh, your VM process. So, uh, if you clone a, a, a vanilla CentOS uh, or any uh, CentOS VM um, that you uh, build and you clone it for different uh, IP address uh, for different purposes uh, you will notice that sometimes the networking will not work because the VM will not have the same static MAC address uh, same MAC address as it had before uh, so originally so so uh, on, on CentOS uh, there is a file that gets uh, configured which is called um, under cat if you cat the etsy udev rules.t 70 net persistent uh, 70 persistent net rules so you'll see that file which will have the uh, the mac address of the of the of the uh, network card right so uh, for example if i do ifc of g config uh, i'll have the same mac address where it's specified so it's c here so when you clone a vm you don't get the same mac address usually uh, your hypervisor will generate a new mac address in most cases and this will fail so your vm will not have networking either or if you use the vmware cloning wizard that will probably create a uh, a second network car like it one instead of it zero um which you don't like or i don't like usually so so i like to have the same uh, uh you know interface so uh to stop uh, happening you know this thing yeah, you, you can do this. Uh, so you, what you can do is basically, uh, first of all, you go to your uh, Etsy sysconfig network scripts. So, so I'm going to clone this VM, right? So, uh, and then I'm going to look at the Etsy first and make sure there's nothing MAC address. So sometimes, you know, you'll see something um, like, uh, you know, hardware address you know, equals to MAC address, right? You could see that uh, so delete that uh, line before you clone it and then you remove this uh, etsy udev rules dot d dot okay delete that but now still we are not there yet if you do that and you you clone of course you will get uh, the the, uh, the clone not not to not have uh, the mac address um, but if you uh, clone one VM and and you clone another VM from the other one from the clone VM, then you will still have the same problem. Uh, what I like it to do is usually I like to uh, remove it permanently if possible. So uh, to do that, I I I I, uh, I usually uh, do a CP first CP the lib the the the, the module that uh, writes the this file. I usually remove that. So uh, udev and it's called write. So you see uh, write net rules. That's the one that does it, this whole 70 persistent net rules file generation, right? So I'm just going to copy that to somewhere if I can bring it back again. Usually I don't need it anymore, but I just like to keep a copy. And then I can just do a remove. Okay, and you're asking me if I don't do this, yes. Okay, now let's uh, reboot this uh, VM, see if that gets generated automatically. So I wanna see if this gets generated again, uh, if I reboot this VM. So you see this VM console here. Make it bigger for you. Okay, We're almost there.
Okay, so uh, I want to go uh, to this VM again. And I'm going to do I have config, make sure my interface is there, it's still there. And so I don't have that file anymore. So as you see here, um, we do an ls, right? I don't have that file anymore. So now I'm okay to clone this VM however many times I want, and every time it'll, I'll clone it, it'll configure the uh, you know Nix properly and only be dependent on MAC address. So um, this can be handy uh, with the you know cloud uh, uh, deployments and, and 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 do a lot of cloning and you know a master image uh, that can help a lot. Anyway, so I hope this video helps uh, and if you like the video, press like or subscribe to my video. Thank you for watching.